Hey there, Adrian D'Amico here, business coach and founder of the Social Media Breakthrough and the Empower You Academy. Welcome to a coaching tip on why I feel most business plans do not work and I'm going to be revealing with you today a business plan that is guaranteed to work every single time. You see, a couple of years ago I embarked on some training with a top business coach named Brendan Bouchard. So what I'm going to teach you today is a training that I've learned from him. All the credit goes to Brendan Bouchard on this one. It is not my own. However, I do implement it in my business life and within my coaching client's business's life. Okay, so this is something that I know is tried and true, something that works every single time. You see, I guess the frustration that I've had with business plans over the last several years is that they tend to be so in depth and so, I guess, thorough and not that there's anything really wrong with that, but I see a shortcoming in as far as that most business owners that I coach and myself included, I get overwhelmed with having such a deep and detailed business plan. And the funny thing is, is that once we set these business plans in place, if we actually eventually get around to it, is that it tends to just sit in the bottom of the drawer and that is the wealthiest, or, you know, most knowledgeable place in our office or in our house and it just sits there and we do nothing with it. I think there's a couple of main reasons why that is. A, it is such a boring, uninspired document. Let's be honest, it, it really does, uh, for, for the most people, it just gives you a sense of overwhelm and it really, I guess, disempowers you to take action. So within this business plan that I'm going to show you, it really starts to simplify your actions every single day and which, which is why it's called the One Page Productivity Planner. Now, I'd encourage you to use this in your everyday business as your plan. Not only are you setting a plan for your future, something that goes, you know, you might say one or two or three years down the track for your business career. However, it's something that you can attack on a daily basis, okay? So without further ado, let's get into the training. Okay, so I have my trusty whiteboard here and you'll notice that I've got some things that are heading over the whiteboard and I've I kind of purposely missed out on all the missing pieces so I can keep you interested in this video for longer and also I can walk you through this step by step. So this is just an overview of the One Day Productivity Planner by Brendan Bouchard. Now, it starts off with three Ps. And what I'll do is I'll start to fill in the blanks for you. The first P stands for projects. Okay, so naturally you want to start off with the projects that you're working on, right? But the thing is, is that we most of us, because we're entrepreneurs, because we're creative, because we're so excited about our business and it's the start of the new year, so let's list the thousand projects that we want to do and we have these numbered, you know, one through to 25, you know. Projects can be also called goals, uh, but this stage let's call them projects for the sake of this one page productivity planner. Now, Really, at the end of the day, you want to work on around three projects max. Now, what I encourage my clients to do is don't list a thousand projects and get yourself overwhelmed by the fact that you're setting so many goals. And the thing is, is that typically speaking, you might only attack two, three, four, five, maybe even 10 of them. But in my experience, they tend to be 10 half finished goals, half finished projects that never really get off the ground because you're simply overwhelmed and distracted with all the other things that go on in your life anyway. So this always gets push to the bottom of the priority list. But the first P stands for projects, okay? So the maximum number of projects that you really want to be setting at each time is three. Now, the next step after you set the amount of projects that you want to work on, like I said, the recommend number is three, you want to start to think about what are the things that you need to do to get these projects off the ground. Now, what I recommend is you list five things to get this project 
off the ground or moving forward. Okay, so now that you've got your projects lined up, you know that you've got three of them to work on, what are five things that you can now work on to get this moving forward? So this now simplifies uh, an overview of what you need to be doing to making sure that this project is gonna move forward. So start to think creativity now, as in what you need to get this thing off the ground. So you know, what are the things that you need to work on first? Do you need to start mapping things out? Do you need to make a call to someone? Do you need to send off an email? Do you need to get some design work done? Do you need to get some artwork completed? Do you need to strategize around the do's and don'ts? Do you need to do some market research? What are those five things? Then the next P that we're working on is people. Okay, so when it comes to people, you need to work on your resources. You need to work on the contacts that you're gonna to utilize to get this project off the ground. So the first thing that we wanna think about is who do we need to reach out to? Okay, so Again, if we're looking at a project that we need to get artwork out, do we need to get some sort of a, uh, an outline or a plan of how this is gonna look and feel? Who do we need to reach out to? Who do I need to send an email to? Who do I need to pick up the phone and make that call to, to make sure that that first step, that th second step, third step is being taken care of? And then once you've set these things in motion, the next step is to find out who are we waiting on? So the thing is, is that when we put ourselves in a situation where we now know where our projects are, we've got to reach out to these people. So instead of getting lost in your email, lost in your to-do list, the thing is, is that once you start to reach out to these people, once you start putting those actions in place, you've made the calls, you've done everything you need to do in that project, then all we need to do is set a list on who we're waiting for. Who are we waiting on? And if you are expecting a response back, then perhaps you can schedule a diary note two days from now to say, hey, I'm waiting on John to return that email about the artwork, about the ebook cover, about you know, the one page uh, uh, landing page that you're working on, something like that. So those components there are highly important when we're relating it back to our projects. And the last but not least is priorities. So what are our priorities in, within these projects? What do we, uh, are our must do's, all right? Our must do's today. This is a key component because the thing is, is that our busy business lives do distract us most of the time. If you're anything like me, you've got family, you've got other work outside of work commitments that are really taking you away from your dollar productive activities within work. And let's face it, not everything can be about work every minute of the day. You need to have that quality time for your health, quality time for your family, and all the other interests that you may have. So the thing is, is that we tend to get very lost in our priorities as to what we're actually actioning today. What are the must do's today to make one of these projects or all of these projects move forward? So now that you've got your list of projects to recap, we wanna list how many? Three projects. Then we wanna state what are the five things that I need to be working on to make this project move forward? The next is people. Who do I need to reach out to? Who, am I need to? who do I need to make a call to? Who do I need to email? Uh, who do I need to reach out to find out some information? Do I need to do market research? Do I need a resource that can provide artwork? Do I need someone who's great at video? Do I need someone who's great at editing? You know, what are those people that I need to reach out to? And who am I waiting on? Now that you've set those actions in place, who are you waiting back on to, in order to get this thing forward? Now, once those 
uh, achievements have been made, then you just tick them off the list and you add another five things to get this job moving forward, this project moving forward. So you can see now that you haven't started a project in order to uh, and, and write down you know, 25 or 30 things that need to get done, you've just written down five. Then once you check off that list, then you replace that with the next five things in order to make that project move forward. So the final pro priorities is what are your must do's today? What do I need to do today? What phone call do I need to make? What action do I need to take today to make this project move forward? Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that coaching tip. It certainly made a huge difference in my business life and in the lives of my clients. It certainly does, for me, streamline everything that I need to do each day. It stops the overwhelm and it helps me get a lot more projects completed throughout the year. And believe me, I've been working on anywhere between sort of three or more projects per month or the ideas that I come up with, but this one day planner keeps me on track with those three projects. It allows me to move through them quickly and then start a new project and have that go to completion and really follow it through. In the past, I've always been frustrated as why I can't accomplish as much as I set out to at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. And the main reason is life just gets in the way. It's just too busy. And when I do get to set my goals and my business plan, it's so overwhelming. It's, it's, it puts me in such a deflated state over a period of time that I tend to just forget about it and just go back to the old ways that I'm used to doing. And really, that is a key to business failure, not success success. I'd like to leave you with a couple more comments and really just the main reasons, well one of the three reasons why I feel businesses fail. And this more I guess puts back to not just the business idea but the business owner themselves. I'm talking to you because you are the brains, you are the energy, you are the reason behind your business's success or failure. And one of the three things that I find with most business owners, the reason why their business just doesn't take off or get to that level that they desire it to be, is they simply don't have a strategy. You see, you need a strategy, it's plain and simple. But not only do you need a strategy going forward, you need something that's not only for your business, but for you yourself. You need a strategy around health, you need a strategy, strategy around um, what you eat, you need a strategy around exercise, you need a strategy around your business, around staffing, around marketing. There is all sorts of things that really complement to your entire business life. It's no good anymore just to say that, you know, I'm going to spend all my time and energy into my business and at the same time, you're neglecting your wife or husband or your children. If you're anything like me, you know, life does get busy. I've got three kids, I've got a mortgage, I'm married, I experience all of those things on a day-to-day -day basis. So I need to make sure that not only do I have a strategy for business, but I have a strategy for my family, for my health as well. Strategy is a key important ingredient to any business success, any life success. And it's one of the things that I think a lot of business owners let themselves down is because they either have one or worst case scenario, they have no strategy whatsoever. They're just going by flying by the seat of their pants and experiencing day to day and just going to work and figuring out how to put out spot fires for that day and, and taking on whatever comes their way. Without a strategy going forward, without a vision, without some sort of steps in between to achieve the goals that you want to set within your business life, uh, you really are destined for failure because you're simply flapping in the wind. The same goes for your family and for your health. If you don't have a strategy for those, then how can you run a successful business? Because and you know this whole thing about balance is such a, a buzzword these days, but it truly is something that I feel is very hard to attain without a strategy. The next thing, the next reason why I think most businesses don't go well or fail is because they simply lack motivation. Now when I talk about motivation, it encompasses a lot of things. 
It encompasses things like energy. Sometimes businesses have a great idea. Sometimes they have a fantastic market. Um, people, uh, the market responds to it well. Um, there's many uptakes, you know, there's sales and all those sorts of things. But the business owner themselves, they run out of puff. They run out of energy. They run out of steam. There are things I know in my own business life where I've had staff problems and bits and pieces like that. It sends me into, a, or had sent me into a, a, a situation where, you know, I really started to not like people. Now, as a business owner in a people business, that is uh, not a good feeling to have. That's some. That's a situation that you definitely don't want to be in when you're coming home and you're disgruntled and you're upset and you've, you've got a bad taste in your mouth. You just don't want to talk to anyone. The problem is when we come home, we take our problems home to our family and then we unload that on our husband or wife or our children, which is the very worst thing that we can possibly do. So motivation is a key thing. In, in my life, I seek and sort out motivation from experts, from people that are coaches, people that are mentors, people that have actually had this business success in life that I've desired myself. So I sought mentors out from a very young age, particularly when I started my first business at the age of 27. So I quickly realized because after about six months, I was actually on the brink of going broke and I had to make some radical changes. And one of the key things that I did was reach out to people that actually had been through the business uh, success that I wanted to achieve. And so they could teach me all the go wrongs. I sought out a coach and even today, as a coach myself, I still have mentors and coaches that I reach out on, out to, to, uh, I guess, improve myself, to sharpen the sword, Stephen Covey says, uh, to improve my skills, to improve my mindset, and to keep me in check, to make sure that I actually follow through the things that I say that I'm going to do. Because it's easy to have great intentions, it's easy to have, um, you know, great ideas, but unless you're putting those into place, unless you have sustained energy, unless you have motivation, someone to kick you up the bum, someone to hold you accountable, then it really does fall by the wayside over a period of time. It's very hard to sustain a high level of motivation uh, throughout the 12 months of the year um, without having some sort of outside influence to keep you in check. The next thing is really just simple know-how. Oh, almost forgot how to spell know-how. You see, the thing is, when it comes to running a business, there's really no sort of business school that you go to. You know, when I first started my business, and like I said, at the age of 27, I actually had this grand idea that I was gonna get into this business and I was gonna retire within about five years. The reality was that 10 years later, after many trials and tribulations, I went through the gamut of emotions that you would not believe within that business life. And it really has inspired me. It really has, um, I guess, created and shaped me to the person that I am today. Um, but as a as a experience, as a as a way of going through it, it almost brought me to my knees. This business life, this entrepreneurial life, is not for everyone, and it's certainly not what we set out to uh, when we initially set out to embark on a business life. It's not what we really expect, is it? So it really comes down to know-how and over the years I've really had the pleasure of sitting with experts, with master coaches and learning technical things, skill sets that is really not taught in schools, it's really not taught in university, it's not taught at many levels of education because you know business smarts and uh, education as far as schools concerned are two very different things. Having the know-how, having the tools and the strategies to get you through each business cycle, each business level is a critical path to success. So look, I'll leave you with that and just one other thing. I'd like to offer you this opportunity where what I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients is I sit with them for a two-hour strategy session. Now, not to impress you, but my coaching rates are around $250 an hour. So for a strategy session uh, of two hours where we go through this project, this very uh, one-day business plan, and also strategy, also motivation, accountability, and know-how, it costs around $495.
But I'd like to offer you this opportunity, perhaps that we could work one-on-one -on -one together. If you'd allow me to be your coach, I'd like you to, I guess, come on board with me and spend two hours in this strategy session for just $150. If this sounds interesting to you, if it's something that you want to take that next step, then I urge you now to click the link below and please send me your name and details. That'll start a conversation between us where we can try and get together one-on-one -on -one if convenient or via Skype or a phone call where I can put you on the fast track to success within your business. If you'd like to take that up on my opportunity, then I would love the opportunity to be your coach. Thanks for listening to me today and thank you for being part of this training. I'll see you on the next video.